But first, let's get the latest from Nathan King, who was at the White House. And earlier, the president met with House leaders for almost 90 minutes. Was it good? No, it wasn't good, Philip, at all. 90 minutes, the first meeting that we've seen between the president and the leaders of Congress since the shutdown began. We'd hoped of some sort of breakthrough, but I can tell you the political leaders seem to be dug in for the long term. They don't want to, they will not negotiate. We had a nice conversation, a polite conversation, but at some point we've got to allow the process that our founders gave us to work out. We're not going to play, we're through playing these little games uh, on, and all is all focused on Obamacare. That's all it's about. Well, this government shutdown going to day three costing about 300 million U.S. dollars a day. But that is small beer considering the next hurdle that Congress and the president is going to have to jump. And that is the raising of the debt ceiling. And that is worrying more than just the politicians here. Politicians weren't the only ones trooping to the White House Wednesday. Wall Street executives came to town, worried about the shutdown but even more fearful that Congress won't raise America's debt ceiling. The debt clock near New York's Times Square shows America's national debt racing towards the limit of $17 trillion, mandated by the U.S. Congress. The U.S. Treasury says Congress must raise that limit by October the 17th, or the U.S. will face its first ever default. If that happens, the U.S. government would be unable to pay pensions, salaries and even interest to foreign investors holding U.S. Treasury bonds. That could lead to a crisis in the world financial markets and beyond. There's precedent for a government shutdown. There's no precedent for default. We're the most important economy in the world. We're the reserve currency of the world. Uh, payments have to go out to people. If money doesn't flow in, then money doesn't flow out. So we really haven't seen this before, and I'm not anxious to uh, be a part of the process that witnesses it. But even if the debt limit is raised once more, there's no guarantee that in a few months' time, when it needs to be raised again, the same political game of chicken isn't played out here again in Washington. The debt ceiling has come to be a very perverse element of the do U.S. domestic political scene. The best thing that could happen would be if it became a dead letter and ceased to be part of the political debate. U.S. President Barack Obama has indicated he'd like to avoid battles over raising the debt ceiling in the future, but that would mean compromise to reach a long-term deal with the U.S. Congress which most political analysts here would argue is unlikely in this poisonous political environment. You know, raising the U.S. debt ceiling and keeping it there and away from political haggling was all meant to be part of a grand bargain on U.S. fiscal issues about two years ago between the U.S. President Barack Obama and the leader of the House of Representatives, John Boehner. That didn't happen, and we look as far away from that as we ever have been, Phil. Nathan, you're there at the White House. What's the mood like? Is there a sense that this is more political posturing, or is it possible that there might be a silver lining? I don't think there's a silver lining at the moment at all. Everyone seems to be dug in. The president can't quite believe uh, that the House Republicans are not willing to give a continuing resolution to keep the government uh, open onto the floor of the House of Representatives, where it would pass with Democrats and Republicans equally. Uh, the House of, uh, of Representatives constituencies really don't like Obamacare, and they know that if they go against uh, 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 health, if they back the government health care plan, they could face primary challenges in their constituencies next year when we go into midterm elections. So everyone knows the political stakes are extremely high. And in this meeting behind me, the last just 90 minutes, it seemed like they were talking over each other, not to each other. So another day of shutdown. We'll see how the American public opinion thinks of their leaders in the morning. Yeah, in just a few hours, Nathan, it will be day three. Stay right there. I want to bring Steve Pruitt uh, into the picture as well, former Democratic uh, staff director of the House Committee on the Budget and is currently a senior pro um, partner at Watts Partners. You know, Nathan was talking about the fact that the mood is bad. He didn't see any silver lining in it. But some pundits that I've been listening to say the fact that the meeting went 90 minutes, is that a good sign at all? Well, it's a good sign that they're talking. Uh, that's been the, one of the missing ingredients all along here, that there's really been no communications. It's been political shots across each other's bow. The, the more dangerous situation, though, is the fact that because I believe the Republicans don't have any bargaining room at this point, they've talked themselves into a corner, 
there's very little that the Democrats are able to do this is such to a appease them now. Fr such a frustrating situation to Americans that are watching. The government is in a standstill, and they're essentially holding the debt ceiling as hostage, which ultimately affects the rest of the world. Nathan and Steve, I want you to take a listen to this, um, this sound that we have from Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. They spoke just after the meeting came out at the White House. Take a listen, guys. We have the debt ceiling staring us in the face. I thought that they were concerned about the long-term fiscal affairs of this country. And we said we are too. But they wanted to shut down government. Uh, they think that that has a purpose for them. And we know what that is. They want to overturn the Affordable Care Act. That's not going to happen. And frankly, that's not uh, what our Constitution had in mind. Steve, uh, it's Nathan here at the White House. Just want to ask you a question. It's not you personally, but you kind of get it that America looks kind of ridiculous in the world right now, that, you know, they're, they're always talking about promoting democracy around the world, but they can't even get it together in their own backyard. Uh, what do you say to that? No, I think uh, when you look at this from the world perspective, the U.S. not being able to handle just the fundamentals of, of operating government funding government, and then dealing with policy questions in a reasonable way. I mean, you look at other parts of the world where there are fist fights. I just think at this juncture, uh, we're going to see more of that in the U.S., and we're going to see more disruption. And unfortunately, I'm not optimistic that we're going to get to the point where they're going to raise the debt ceiling. By Na October 17. Nathan, I want to ask you something. You and I have talked about this quite a bit, yeah. and a lot of this is about the Republicans, for lack of a better word, embarrassing the president. At the same time, the president's working on trying to embarrass the Republicans as well. Who's winning here, you think? Well, I think whenever uh, the president could look presidential and point the finger at, at Congress, uh, that actually works. And I, I think there's one thing on his side here. Uh, is that the uh, health care legislation, Obamacare, passed uh, uh, through the Congress. Uh, it, it was held up mostly by the U.S. Supreme Court, despite huge amounts of pressure uh, from states and Republicans. And also, there was, let's not forget it, a, a presidential election uh, in between as well. So he's saying, look, why are we fighting over this? Surely you can amend a bill if you can, and, and you can't. So basically, he feels that the... Uh, the, uh, the Republicans are holding uh, the government hostage. And also, I think, on a week where Obamacare is launched to uh, Americans, and we saw three and a half, four million people already uh, go on these websites hunting for health insurance they don't have, uh, that is a powerful argument, too. All right. Um, I want you guys to, to, to take a look at this. This is a poll that was done earlier today. 56% of Americans believe that raising the debt ceiling would be a bad thing for the country. 53% blame Republicans in Congress, and 52% of Republicans who, who responded say that it would be a good thing for the country to fail to raise the debt ceiling. I don't have any way to describe this, Steve, but this is financial Armageddon. I mean, I don't understand how someone could just def want to default on all the debt that you owe to the rest of the world, not let alone to yourself, mm -hmm. and think this is a good thing for America. Well, it's not a good thing for America. And I believe that as people get beyond the politics of this, more and more people, as we're already seeing in the Congress, are going to realize that enough is enough. And we will get the critical mass that's necessary. And ultimately, I think, despite the arguments that the Speaker's career is on the line right now. Uh, he's going to have to yield in some way to allow a legislative solution to move forward. All right, let's, let's, I'm going to try to be positive and constructive. What does a solution look like? How can the Republicans walk out quietly from this bear trap they're in, so to speak? Well, I'm not sure they can walk out quietly. They've made too much noise already. Uh, the president has to give them a door open so they can they can get out in there. Otherwise, this, this whole thing doesn't work either. Well, the only piece today that looks possible for inclusion in that would be the repeal of the medical device tax, which is sort of their last offer, if you will, that they put on the table. Uh, that has some legs. It has some bipartisan support. It could become an element in a final package 
that gets moved forward. I, I want to give you credit for something. It's my understanding. Last week we talked a lot about um, whether or not we'd have the government close, and I was trying to be optimistic, and you said, Phil, they're going to close down the government. And of course you were right about that. So I'm going to put you on the spot again. We've got the debt ceiling debate coming up. How much should people, not only in America, but around the world, whether you're in China, Japan, or Europe, how much do we really need to worry about this? Because I get the sense that people don't really understand how big of a big, how big of a deal this is going to be if this thing totally blows up. Well, I think we have to worry. Unfortunately, I believe we have to worry that uh, we will breach the debt ceiling on October 17th, that there will not be a solution, and that it's going to take a, an additional downgrading of the, the U.S. credit ra rating. Uh, Matt, that is a, just a scary, scary thought. That becomes real scary, and, and it, it's going to take that, I believe, for enough pressure to build for sane minds to surface I, in this I, discussion. I cannot imagine anybody wanting us to even have that conversation, whether or not the United States would have a, a lower debt rating, let alone default on loans. Um, Steve Pruitt, thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you, Phil.